Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk some August favorites. I mentioned recently in a is it good video, like what's good, what's bad, I'll link it for you here and in the description box down below, that I've been trying a new sunscreen from Eucerin. Now, the reason I tried this is because I think it was Miss Tango in the comment section several, I don't know, maybe a couple months back mentioned that she'd gotten a sample and loved it. She said her sample came from her dermatologist, so it was recommended, and I was like, ooh, dermatologist recommended? I like that. And she says that you could pick it up at Target for less than $15. I was like, checking all the boxes. Doctor says it's good, it's affordable, easy to get. You don't have to buy it online. You can walk into store and pick it up. And so I went into my local Target, and this was the only Eucerin SPF 50 there was. So I turned it around, and I was reading the back, and nowhere on the packaging does it say not to be used on the face or body only <laughs> and it turns out this is the version for like your body and there's another one like this that comes in a different packaging um that is for your face and i was like i never saw there was only this one and it could be that it was so popular it had already sold out at my local target by the time i was there but i have been using this on the face and i mentioned in that video how with the triple digits sweaty august and sweaty me this was not helping to keep my makeup in place it was a little hydrating a little shifty but i love the way it looked when i put it on the tops of my hands um, when i put it on my arms because i've been doing that too and i like how glowy and hydrated my skin looks compared to not you see the difference this is so like luscious and plump and this is like drier than dry so i'll just tell you i didn't know that there was another one so if you've been looking for this look for the version that is specifically made for the face it comes in a different packaging i'll see if i can find an image of it and throw it up on the screen for you but i'm curious to try it because i want a good spf 50 that's affordable but the good news is it didn't break me out it didn't actually pill any of my skincare that i had underneath and if i was indoors and in air conditioning i actually didn't look that bad my, my makeup didn't have the same same longevity that it might have if i had been using a more matte sunscreen but for August it was actually not doing bad indoors in air conditioning so remember I got it wrong I wanted to make sure to tell you that but I do like the way this makes my body you know feel hydrated and really nice but it's a great product I was so sad when I finally last week of August finished this this is Victor and Ralph's flower balm it's been around for forever. I think the first time I got it was in 2005. My parents brought it back from a European trip. Um, it was available in Europe before it was available here in the States. And I have fallen in love. And I'm not really a signature scent kind of person, but if I was, this would be right up there. It's been a long time since I had it. I picked it up uh, last year during one of the Sephora sales. And I'm out. It's the 1.7 ounce. It's basically the one that I use every day. I love this fragrance. Um, I will throw the, the scent notes up on the screen for you because I never recall what they are. It just smells pretty and it's not too floral and it's not too sweet for my taste. I do have the bonbon version of this, which is a little, I liked it at first and then I realized it's a little too sweet, but I'll, I'll get through it. Um, but this is my favorite. I have had this one when they have, do they still have the intense version? I don't know. I've had so many iterations of this scent from Victor and Rolf. Really love it. I need another one and I'm gonna see if I can get myself to wait until the fall Sephora sale. Or maybe if I wait until the holidays, there'll be a set. Okay, hold me to that, but I love. Another product that I've talked about so many times, you probably know it's coming your way. It's the Glossier Stretch Concealer. Look, I'm almost out. I placed an order for more of this and I picked up another jar of their After Balm. I really have been liking it, even though it's kind of a rich, heavy cream. Um, it's sitting in my bathroom and I didn't mean to say it's a favorite, but I, I did repurchase that when I purchased this because I don't want to go through colder weather without it. So right now, this is doing all the things I need like on a really light makeup day, offering me just enough, not too much. I have maybe like two applications left. And the other one, I'm hoping arrives soon because I don't want to be without this. A new concealer that has super impressed me and I wasn't sure I was going to like it and I initially didn't purchase it because I was like, oh no, that's not for me. 
is this. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Okay, so Huda's products have notoriously been super high coverage. And this is exactly that, it's super high coverage. But usually super high coverage to me ends up being mask-like, ends up being too heavy and aging me. Because the older I get, the more of those fine lines and wrinkles I have, and especially under the eye, which is where I really want a lot of color correction. This is a beautiful product. I have the second to lightest shade. It's 1.1N and this is called Royal Icing. This is what it looks like. So if we're looking at the coverage that this offers, do you see this area here, this blanked out area? I am so impressed with that. You can see kind of where it ends right here, but it's a really good color match for my skin. On top of that, it doesn't really accentuate or dry my under eyes. I only picked this up because I saw a makeup artist that I really appreciate talking about how good she thought this was. Andrea Ali was like, this is so good, I can't put it down. I was like, really? And I know she's a decade and more younger than me, but I was like, okay, she's concerned about the same sort of things that I am. I'm willing to try this. So I, when I was at Sephora recently, I picked it up and here is what it's supposed to be. A crease proof, medium to full buildable, creamy concealer that brightens, conceals and moves with you for all day luminous matte skin-like finish. And I feel like that's such a great description of this product because I don't, I mean, is it 100% crease proof? No, and maybe it's because it's warmer weather here and I'm perspiring, but I feel like this does better than most other concealers that I have. While giving me that heavy coverage, this is one of the few that I do not need to use a color corrector underneath. I can use it on its own. I love this for the days that I wanna look polished and I don't wanna worry about anything dry and aging happening underneath my eyes. It's super good at covering up my hyperpigmentation spot. It's really nice at covering up the redness in the corners of my nose. Very impressed with this. Early this month, I stopped by Ulta and I picked up some products from Essence. There's very little that I'm familiar with from the brand. It's like, you know what? Let's dive into a little bit more affordable drugstore. So I recorded that like on the fourth or the fifth of the month, but I didn't get it uploaded until a couple of weeks later. So please trust me when I say I've been trying these products almost all month long, at least three weeks or more. But my favorite product from that video was this. This is the Kiss by the Light Illuminating Powder. I have the shade 01 Star Kissed, but this has been the one thing, and, and here's what I love, is when I start using a product and it stays on my countertop, doesn't get put away, and I reach for it day after day, that's when I know that it is really like rising to the top. Is it expensive? No. Is it fabulous? Yes. I love that each of these lines here is highlight, blush, bronzer. When you swirl them all together, you get a beautiful, glowy, kind of blushy look. But it has the depth from the kind of bronzer shades. It has the glow from the highlight. Now, as a 47-year-old, I have to be careful that I don't use too much of this. So my favorite brush to use is one that's shaped like this, where it's small, gives me a, a lot of control as to placement, but also really long and wispy. I find that if I'm using something that's a little bit more compact, something that has shorter bristles, I get too much. This is just enough to do like a nice kind of light, wispy layer on so I don't get a really harsh highlight. And you can see it is very frosty and it can bring attention to my crow's feet, to some of the texture that I have in here. So a smaller brush like this, if you're curious, this is the Wayne Goss 14. I don't know if he's still making this brush, but find a brush that's like this. If you're using a highlight or a blush that's a little bit more pigmented or has a lot of payoff, something like this can really help because it's not going to just stamp it down. And it's really easy if I'm holding it at the end of the handle and just, you know, lightly going over the top. It just barely kisses my skin with color. And this is, for many days this month, the only product I use, no bronzer, no blush, just this. And I get all of the things that I want together really quick and sends me out the door. And since I wear powder products for work only, since I'm in a mask all day at the dentist's office, this has really, really surprised me. And I really like it. And it doesn't end up being too blushy or too bronzy. It is very highlighty, but I really have been liking this. 
I have perpetual favorites when it comes to eyebrows, but something caught my interest and attention I had to try. This is the new pencil from Benefit. This is their Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil. All right, so this is a pencil, a wooden pencil that you sharpen, and it's kind of like a powdery pencil. If you're used to using um, a pencil that is a little bit more wax-based, if you're drawing it through, sometimes it, it can give a really sharp line, or if you're getting too much built up, you can find little chunky clumps in your brows. That is not the case with this. Not only is it a powder-based pencil, it is also fibers in the product. And I love me a tinted fiber gel. Sometimes I wear only tinted fiber gel in my eyebrows, but this pencil, I don't know what it is. I have been reaching for it the instant I got it at the beginning of August. I have been using it non-stop. I can't, I can't stop. I love this so, so much. All right, so this pencil is in the shade 3.5, which I'm wearing it today. I feel like it's a really good match for my eyebrows. It draws thick and thin, you know, depending on how much I'm willing to sharpen. The other thing is it has a really nice spoolie on the other end. I feel like Benefit does kind of like the Goldilocks of spoolies where it's not so soft that it won't brush product through and it's not so harsh that it scratches your skin and irritates and pretty soon you have that underlying redness where you've been like scratching at your skin trying to brush the product through because when I go through and spoolie this, it actually does spoolie nicely. It lightens it up and blurs it so it makes it believable. I use this to quickly draw in my brows. I brush it through with the spoolie and then I take a clear brow gel. I've just been using the Control Freak from NYX because I have it. And I feel like I get really good brows. The nice thing about this is that this does well in heat. It does well on a sweaty day. I don't feel like I lose my eyebrows if I end up doing this, trying to wipe perspiration off my forehead. I'm not saying that it's waterproof. I'm just saying that it does pretty well. Now, I'm not like a four-year-old wiping their forehead and doing this. I am, you know, kind of dabbing, but there have been other brow products that can't survive any of that. <laughs> this has actually really surprised me. For the longest time, I thought Benefit products were good, but they weren't worth the price for me because I could find really great products at a lower price, but sometimes three or four dollars lower and sometimes 10 to 12 dollars lower. This is one that I would go back to. I picked up this beauty from Danessa Myricks when I was at Sephora. This is the Infinite Chromes Eyeliner, and this is in the shade Amethyst. I'm wearing it today. All right, I love a multi-chrome. I always have, and I think I always will. I love this pencil so much. It kind of goes kind of, see this flashy kind of eggplant purpley shade? And then it goes kind of like this darker, almost metallic-y bronze shade. There's a little bit of kind of an olivey green in there. It's hard to see it this way. It looks much more multidimensional in natural light, but I feel like you can definitely see how shifty this is here. I love this. Okay, so I'm wearing this today kind of right at the base of my lashes on the underside to block out all the gaps. I have it on the top of my lashes as liner, and I like that it's a softer color. I mean, it's fun and it's shifty, but it's not so overpowering like a dark espresso brown or a black that you see this. And I have been loving wearing this. I'm worried because it is such a small pencil and it is so skinny. I'm gonna burn through it <laughs> and I'm gonna want another one. This was in the 20s, what, 21, $22? I don't remember exactly, but this is one that I really have been liking. I used this a lot this month on days I wasn't wearing any eyeshadow on days when all I had was like translucent powder on my lid and then I would draw a really nice kind of slightly winged out you know from the inner corner to the outer and kind of lifted with this and then just threw on a ton of mascara and it was really fun because I had some color not too much and the fact that it does have that beautiful shift to it made for a really interesting look it wasn't too overstated it was very dialed down and I liked that about it I have also been pairing this with one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes from this month all month long but love and I kind of I kind of want to get more of these the eyeshadow palette I have been loving all month long and that I'm wearing today is this this is the on the horizons eyeshadow palette from Sydney Grace in collaboration with Christine from Tintalia oh my goodness I love I wasn't sure now this came out in 2021 
and there it was one of three palettes and they all come in a light variation and a deep variation so I guess that means there's six palettes total but the color story in here was one that I always wondered would I like it would I like it and when Sydney Grace had their 40% off eyeshadow palettes I was like I kind of have to I kind of have to try it so I really have been loving these two shades here these guys through here and these three here the ones I haven't really gotten into are the obvious ones for me these blues the green and this dark kind of purple here doesn't mean that I won't um, I think I've worn this one here once <laughs> it's a very bold color for me I love the formula I love the colors I think I might have also worn this one here once but I have worn this metallic green I haven't worn the matte green but I just have been loving living in this sort of an eye look I didn't think I was gonna like it I love this palette another one that I love that when I saw it debuted on Sydney Grace's website I was like mm, I don't know it might not be for me but they were giving it away as a promotion spend $36 uh, on their website and they would throw this in free and this is the where the wild things are the only shade that I haven't worn on my eyes yet is this one here called elegant candy that kind of you know really it's so pretty I mean look how delicious it looks it's the only shade I haven't worn I love this palette I live in these four shades right here for work so much um, I did use kind of like these greenish tones down here sunflower and primrose I did wear these to work one day um, I have done a lot with this terracotta shade and I love this dark brown called Bee Balm. Now the formula is exactly what I would expect from Sydney Grace. I definitely love that you have like these really creamy buttery metallics but the same can be said about the mattes. They're creamy, they're buttery, they blend themselves. I prefer putting these pressed pigments on with my finger because I can pick up a, a shade and I can just tap it down like this and I get exactly what I'm looking for this is great and I didn't think that you know with this kind of richer terracotta this purple and this dark green here that this would be for me but I have been loving it and eight out of nine shades used regularly this month I think that's a really good place to be so I do love this another product I picked up during the Christmas and July sale is this cream shadow this is in the shade boardwalk this Oh my goodness it's stunning and I have been wearing this on my lazy girl days for work look at this it's like a shiny penny it's so pretty so I put down just the smallest amount I blend it out with my finger and once I get kind of like up to close to where my crease is I'll bring in a really fluffy stiff brush like this and the nice thing is even after this formula is set and it's dry you can still and it's not dry yet you can still blur the edge with a fluffy brush I love that the nice thing about this formula is that once it sets it stays really well all day I saw something when I was scrolling through Instagram where somebody said I lost the chapstick in my car and now my bathroom chapstick is in my car and my bedroom chapstick is in the bathroom and my living room chapstick is like what they were just saying they had to move things around because they lost one and I was like ah oh, so relatable and that happened to me because this is kind of the thing that I rely on and I have multiple tubes around there's one in my car there's one by my bedside there's one in my bathroom I keep one at the desk where I edit all of my videos there's one there and then I have another one and this is so funny I have one um, in my crochet project bin I keep one in there with all of my crochet hooks and I even have one of these in my purse like how many is that and one of them went missing and I was like where is it this is the one that went missing and this is like almost out I was like ah I want to finish it before I lose it and so I was looking underneath the bed I was looking in drawers I was looking all over the house that I miss it and it turned out my 14 year old had taken it and had used it and instead of returning it which is fine that she uses it but she left it in her room on her bedside table and so when I was in there one evening uh, kissing her goodnight and telling her I you sleep well I was like wait is that mine <laughs> I took it back and I said if you want your own I will get you your own but don't take mine when I can't find my things I get a little bit panicky and it's silly to get panicky but this is literally my favorite lip balm I love the balm.com and I have forever I particularly like this one this is the mango one I love mango I love coconut I love the cookie butter one I haven't tried the 
Honey Lavender. They always have new shades coming out and I like that, but I tend to like the ones that have almost no color to them or are very neutral in color. I'm the sort of person that if my cuticles are a little ragged and dry, I'll just take like a little teeny tiny amount of this and rub it in. Um, if I end up feeling like my eye under eye area is very dry, especially in the winter time, I'll put on my eye cream and I'll use this as an occlusive layer over the top. I'll put a little dab between my fingers, do this and tap it in underneath as I'm going to bed at night to make sure that everything is going in and not coming out. So I've kind of been slugging my under eyes for years with this. <laughs> So I really like this product and I tend to be able to multitask with this product most when it really doesn't have like a color. So the cherry or the berry one don't work well for me because I use them in multiple places. But love and I had that moment of like relatable when I saw that Instagram post about you know when somebody's chapstick going missing and then all the other chapsticks get shifted to other locations it's kind of like your world is chaotic. That's what I talked about this before. I, I am to the point where I can see I'm running low. I'm scraping the sides here and it's kind of a sticky formula. So there's a lot less in here than I think, but this is the Glow Paradise. What is it? Glossy Balm. I forget what it is. It's a lip gloss balm from L'Oreal. I love this. The formulation is beautiful. This is the shade 40 Blissful Blush. I love the color of this. It's so easy to wear. This is what I've been wearing underneath my mask at work. Um, yeah, it, it can kind of, as I'm talking to patients, kind of go a little bit, but it's easy to just kind of wipe down and clean up where it kind of goes outside, but it keeps my lips really moisturized. It's nice, it's comfortable, it's not sticky, it's nice and shiny on the days that I'm not at work and I'm not wearing a mask, and it's an easy low makeup day or I've had on something else, and my lips are just a little bit feeling dry and neglected. I'll throw on a layer of this. I had to dig this out of my purse. I take this with me everywhere. When I get to the point where I can't get any more out of this, I'm going to get another one. I really like this. And I think for me, it's mostly the shade because I do have other formulations I like, but this shade is so easy. It goes with everything and it's super comfy. All right. Another product that I have been using habitually at work underneath my mask is this. I've talked about it before. This is the tinted lip balm from Honest Beauty. I have the shade Blood Flower. It's kind of like a warm sheer red and on my lips looks like a glossy, not quite popsicle stain. Popsicle stain would be giving it too much color, but it brings life and color to my face without looking like I'm trying. And that's what I love about this. It's super comfortable, super easy to wear. I had it underneath my mask at work all day yesterday. And as I took my mask off, I did have a little bit of it kind of on the edge of my lips where it might have been. It just looked like I'd had um, a good makeout session. <laughs> but I love, I love this. This is super comfortable. I keep saying I want to get more of these, but I have so many like hydrating balms and things. I really don't need anything else. But this is the one that when I do burn through it and we're kind of getting there, it's kind of down low, I would get another one. $9, super comfortable, and I love the price. For actual lipstick lipsticks that I've been reaching for this month, let me tell you, my fave easy ones, the one I'm wearing today is the Merit Lipstick in L'Avenue. This is a beautiful kind of pretty berry tone that's sheer. It looks very much like a my lips but deeper. It It's so comfortable. I like it best when it's kind of thin on and worn in. I love the formulation. They feel very lightweight. They're nourishing. They're, they're just beautiful. Everything about this lipstick makes me want more. Um, I would like to get their kind of more reddish shade and maybe a different nude, but this formulation is $26 and I feel like for that price, you're getting so much more because the packaging is so pretty. I do like that we have kind of like this clear component here. I do like that you have the Merit logo on the bottom. This metal packaging here feels very luxe. I feel like this is very beautiful high-end packaging. And then on top of that, the product on the inside is mm, chef's kiss. So if you haven't tried these, I feel like these are a real steal for $26. Um, they recently all came back into stock for months. They had been out of stock on Merit's website, on Sephora's website. You couldn't find them anywhere. I'm glad that they're back in stock. And if you really like a easy, lightweight kind of lipstick, almost balm sort of product, you'd really like these. 
you know me, I love my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and I've purchased a lot in the last month and a half-ish, but this is the one that I've been reaching for a lot this month. This is the Luxuriously Lucent shade in Meet Me in Berlin. And I see that it's kind of similar in tone to the one from Merit, but this is Meet Me in Berlin. It looks gorgeous when it's kind of worn in, when it's not freshly applied. It looks pretty when it's freshly applied too, but these two I like best when they've been on for an hour or more. I find that I get a little bit less where I might get about three and a half to four hours out of this before I have to reapply. And I might get four to five hours out of this before I have to reapply. So for me, I can put it on in the morning and then after lunch, I reapply. This one I can get almost to lunch and then I need to reapply. But they're not meant to be long wear, they're meant to be comfortable and I and kind of sheer. And I like that about both of these. This one's a little bit, I would say, a little bit glossier than the one from Merit, um, but they're both fantastic. All right, this is the one lipstick that I have mixed feelings about. This is the new Transfer Proof Matte Lipstick from Dior. And of course, your red loving girl got a red. <laughs> I have the shade Forever Dior 999. Now, this is an interesting lipstick. I love the shade. I'm glad I found this display at Sephora because at $42, I would not have felt confident just ordering a random shade from the website. Um, I would want to go and swatch to make sure that I'm getting a color I could use that I wanted a nude, but I didn't like any of the undertones. Some of them were too cool, a little too gray leaning that would make me look corpse-like. Um, some of the other ones were too deep and too brown, and I like very specific kind of brown lipstick. And this really heavy pigmented lipstick, they just didn't have the shades that would work well for me, so I went for the bright color. They talk about this being transfer proof, as in not transferring to a cup, a mug, um, uh, maybe a fork as you're eating a meal, um, or giving somebody a kiss not having product kind of transfer from one to the other. I was hoping transfer proof meant I could wear it underneath my mask at work. <laughs> Sadly, that's not the case. It didn't do poorly. Most other red lipsticks would have been everywhere and I would have had legit clown mouth. That didn't happen. I did have a little bit of wear right where like my Cupid's bow touches and right here touches in my mask as I'm talking to patients at work. So when I took my mask off at lunch, I did it in the bathroom wanting to repair any damage that I had. And I'll tell you, it, it took a little bit of like concealer to blank out where it had gone outside of my lip line, but it wasn't really bad. I'll put a picture up here for you. It did last all day at work, all eight hours, but a couple of things happened. One, my lips did not feel as hydrated as I would like them to feel. And you know me, I'm the lip balm queen. I love something that's juicy and plush and the minute my lips don't feel like nourished like they do right now wearing this lipstick i start to get a little bit like oh i need more moisture okay there's that second of all because this is such a bright color and when it dries down to kind of that finish where it's set it has kind of a powdery feel to it i found that it was really easy to see where the color was and right on that line where your lips touch and it goes from being dry to being wet on the inside of my lip the product would not stay there. And I think most lipsticks won't, but because it was such a bright color, you could see where the color was, and then my natural flesh tone lip on the inside, right on that ridge. Sometimes where lipstick can collect. There was a small amount of product that had been kind of in that area that collected right on the rim. It wasn't visible, but I could feel it texturally, like there was a little ridge of product. Um, I never got it to wear for 16 hours and still look amazing. I really felt like this center section of my lips where they touch, it was missing a lot there. And for me, if I'm wearing a high maintenance red, I'm ready and willing to reapply, but I needed to reapply that area especially. And I really felt like certain sorts of things wore it down. Um, I had a vinaigrette on a salad, lipstick gone. <laughs> I had a, a night where we were eating uh, pizza, lipstick gone from the grease on the pizza. So just like any um, matte liquid lipstick that gets broken down by oils or any other long wear lipsticks that get broken down by oils, same thing happens with this. I like this. The one thing I do not like, I mean the packaging is so pretty, isn't it? Kind of like this matte black, it has this quilting here. Here's what's interesting is that there's this little notch right here and not here. So this cap only fits on 
going one way. If you try and put it down like this, it's not shaped down. And if you force it, you'll crack the cap, which I saw like half the ones on the display at Sephora had cracked caps. I'm like, how is Dior high-end packaging cracking and breaking? Because they didn't design the cap to go on in any specific direction. It only goes on a certain way. So if you get one of these and you don't want a cracked cap, which then could fall off in your purse and leave product everywhere on the inside on all your things, make sure that you carefully line this back up because it won't go one way, but will the other. That's kind of like a, hmm, a point of frustration and annoyance for me, but it's not gonna stop me from loving this beautiful, warm toned red lipstick. The two fails that I had this month were eyeshadow. One of them is from my favorite brand, Sydney Grace. Now, there's nothing wrong with the eyeshadows in here. I purchased this Sweet Indulgence palette when it was on sale for 40% off during the Christmas and July sale. I should have known better because I only use half the shades in here. I only reach for the mattes. The more colorful shades, I thought I would at least reach for this pink. This is very pink very bubblegummy and when I wore it on my fair skin it was like it felt very Barbie to me. I have not reached for any of these and I think I'm less likely to reach for these guys. Maybe this one. I knew picking this up that this would be a stretch for me and I think I might have stretched myself too far. The one time I did try and use these more colorful shades on my eyes I felt like a kid playing in my mom's makeup. It just was not a successful look. I have been using the mattes in here but I feel like I have these same types of mattes in my Sydney Grace single palette. I feel like I have stuff that's close enough that I didn't need this. So this is not a bad product. I just should have known myself better and not been lured in by the sale. So I'm not saying that I don't like it. I'm just saying that I don't use it. I don't know how fair this one is, but I'm just going to tell you about it. It's this palette, the Hello Berlin palette from Essence that I picked up. This month has been great for eyeshadow because I have so many beautiful Sydney Grace eyeshadow palettes to play with that are new. Um, I have a whole bunch of new singles. I have so many high quality products that my expectations are right up there at the top and I feel like I'm being a little bit of a makeup snob when it comes to this. Is there anything wrong with this palette? No. Does it perform well when you use it with eyeshadow primer? Yeah. It takes a little bit longer to blend. I don't feel like these metallics are as incredible as the ones from Sydney Grace, but they're actually really nice and I think for me it's just, I'm spoiled. I've got a lot of great stuff. I know what I prefer. And this means I need to work a little bit harder by using a primer and then by blending a little bit longer and then by, you see what I'm saying? So it's not bad. And I feel like these are colors that I would really enjoy for fall. And I did get some really pretty looks with this a couple of times that I used it. This is one of those products that because I have so much beautiful Sydney Grace products and I really, really love them, and I'm spoiled for options, I just haven't been reaching for this. Now, had I purchased this on a month when I didn't have like a million new Sydney Grace eyeshadows coming into my collection, I might have used this more. So I kind of feel like it's unfair to say that it's a fail. It's just, it's here and more stuff is coming into my collection and I'm not really reaching for this. Thank you so much for watching today. This is when I wanna know what your favorites have been for this month. Now, it doesn't have to be makeup and beauty. If it is, I always love to know that, but also let me know what your favorite TV show, book, activity, um, oh, do you have a favorite beverage? I have been loving making boba tea at home, bubble tea. I didn't really know how to do it and I was worried it seemed a little intimidating. Watched a couple of YouTube tutorials and now I'm making bubble tea at home whenever I want. <laughs> It's been kind of like my new favorite thing. Um, but let me know what your favorites have been for August and what you're looking forward to as the weather cools off as we head into fall. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.